my name is Stephanie Schneider, and I am a staff member with the Title IV-E program at Cal State San Bernardino School of Social Work. And for the accolade project that I took on is an assessment of the confidence of our students in the child welfare specific competencies. And so really what we need to talk about is the fact that the Title IV-E program holds a contract with the California Social Work Education Center who has developed competencies based off of the Council of Social Work Education competencies for what our students should know to be prepared for career and child welfare, which is the purpose of the Title IV E program, is we really focus on preparing students for a career in public child welfare. And what this assessment is to assess not just if students are meeting the child welfare specific competencies, but identify any gaps in either their understanding, their skills, or their confidence in being able to demonstrate those skills and those behaviors. It also helps us fulfill the requirements of our Title IV-E contract, and it better prepares our students for this career in public child welfare, and hopefully will better prepare them to complete their employment obligation, which is a part of the student contract in terms of they receive monies to help them get their education in exchange for two years of service in public child welfare. And so our goals really were to gather the student perspective on their confidence in the skills and behaviors needed for child welfare work. We assess their skills and behaviors in the classroom. They're assessed by field instructors through their internship, but we wanted a separate space for Title IV e students to be able to tell us with confidence that it wouldn't impact their grades, that it wouldn't impact their chances at getting a job, their confidence and their ability to do a safety and risk assessment and their ability to assess for child abuse, for safety, permanency, and well-being. And so this goal assessment really sought to identify where there are gaps in understanding and confidence and then we plan to use this data to develop practices and processes to fill those gaps in creative and high impact ways that don't put too much more pressure on our students who already have a really full plate. Because we really want to increase their preparation for a career in child welfare. I mean, obviously we want them to complete their employment obligation, but our purpose is really to prepare them for a career. And we want to increase our success, successful completion rates for the employment commitment. And so when we're looking at the steps of what this assessment could look like, we wanted to make sure that we developed an assessment process. And so for right now, we've developed a survey and we're going to send that out to our students about the end of spring semester to see where they feel. And that's gonna be, sent out to both of our students and that are in their foundation year of field and who are completing their program. So they're finishing their advanced year of field. We wanna take that data and we wanna identify those areas needing improvement and then develop some creative and high impact practices that we can implement either in our seminars or in the classroom or as extra voluntary webinars or skill building sessions to fill those gaps. But we wanna make sure that we continue to assess and modify as needed. And what we'd like to eventually insert is not just using a survey, but possibly focus groups to really identify those gaps and from that student perspective. And when we're talking about the priorities for empowering and engaging our students, we, we really want to prioritize the student involvement in this process because we get so much data already from the field instructors, from their internships, and you know, the, the course room professors have that involvement as well. And there's all of those perspectives, but we miss out on that student perspective. And we really want to prioritize their feedback in how they understand those competencies. And we want to make the process feasible and simple because they have so many competing priorities. These are students who are in classes, they're in internships, some of them work, they have families. We don't want to increase the burdens that they have while still improving the program. And so the information, the priorities, the processes, it's all staffed and processed with the Title IV E project coordinators, as well as relevant university and community partners through our partners meetings and through our faculty meetings.
And so when we're talking about the methodology of this assessment, we're going to start out with a survey using the Likert scale assessment. So students scale their own confidence on their behaviors and child welfare specific skills. Eventually, we'd like to increase that to use focus groups to help identify themes in their perspectives and then yearly reevaluate our assessment to make sure that we're measuring what we really want to measure. And perhaps in the future, we'd like to explore if there's a relationship between student perspective and their confidence in these Cal Sweat competencies and their successful employment commitment completion. So our goal for the results is to improve our Title IV-E program by filling gaps in student confidence, which will better prepare our students for their career in child welfare, which will increase their employment commitment completion. So they'll, most of our, our graduates will successfully complete their employment commitment and obligation. Long-term goal would be, you know, maybe we can also increase the retention and decrease the turnover in terms of public child welfare because there will be more people in the field who have the skills and the competencies to be successful and feel that they can be successful. So when we're talking about kind of like our plus delta and our setbacks and where we are right now, but due to the continuing fluctuation in the public health situation or surrounding the pandemic, our students are experiencing like increased stress. And we want to make sure that we are not pushing them over the edge. We want to make sure that they are still successfully completing their classes. They're still being successful in internship without adding that one more thing to the plate. That's the straw that broke the camel's back. And so we want to make sure that our assessment tool is simple, functional, and it's not incredibly time consuming. And so we've created the survey and we plan to implement the survey. We were thinking about that for the fall semester, but it seems to make more sense to do it at the end of the academic year so that students have been engaged for a full academic year since our program is pretty structured. And after determining you know, what can be upgraded and what's working really well of this survey, we're gonna determine the appropriateness of focus groups and if that's something that we're gonna be able to do. And so that's where we're at right now. Um, I hope that you have enjoyed this very brief presentation. We did not get as far along as we wanted to, but I think we're in a good place to start as soon as we're ready. Thank you.